wanted to go over a little bit about LED technologies that we're seeing today. Uh, after the HR, you're starting to see a lot of things going on in air quality as it evolves with different light sources, UVC lamps versus LED technologies. A little bit about us, RGF Environmental. RGF has over 35 years experience in the design, development, engineering, and manufacturing of chemical-free treatment systems for air, water, and food. Um, as part of that, they're very, very act, uh, active in doing R&D, research and development. They have over 15 years of working with LEDs and, and application in the field. My background, I have a degree in chemistry, emphasis in physical chemistry or physics, and I have worked throughout the scientific instrument, environmental engineering permitting, as well as instrument design and support. Um, so a little quick summary on what we see in LEDs today. This is from a manufacturer's perspective. Uh, the box on the right, basically it's a summary from a couple different manufacturers. What do you see? Well, typical germicidal wavelengths in UVC. I think the one thing I want to draw your attention here, especially if you're going to be a consultant and you're, you're specifying equipment, is to understand the energies. So if you look at the, oh, excuse me, it breaks. Uh, the box on the right, the column on the right, if you look at the energy difference, on the very bottom is a UVC lamp at over 20,000 milliwatts. And if you start to look at your LEDs, you notice a slight difference in the energy level of your LEDs. And then in the middle, we are, we're all starting to hear about blue light disinfection, uh, black light disinfection, 405 nanometers. Uh, I bring, pull that out because the wavelengths are looking at really they kind of bridge both the high end of the, of the UVC as well as the visible range. Uh, so 405 to 470, even as high as 477. And you'll see those are running as high as 1200 milliwatts or 1.2 watts. Now the pros with the LEDs really haven't changed, right? We know they're great for energy savings, they have a longer life, no mercury. We like that they're not temperature dependent, they're digital. We can, we can monitor what's going on full time and unlimited cycle, turn them on and off. If any of you have ever worked with UVC lamps, you don't want to cycle. You will shorten their life dramatically. Uh, the cons, high intensity UVC LEDs, $5 to $150. Our experience is you pretty much get what you pay for. Those $150 LEDs are typically used gold as conductors, so they transfer heat very, very efficiently, which means they have higher energy. That this group up here that you see at the 260 to 275 and 40 to 60 milliwatts, they're the ones using gold. Uh, very, very high quality LEDs are also the ones that are $150 per LED. Uh, light intensity is low. Uh, we don't quite have the energy and heat management. When you're dealing with high intensity LEDs, which is what you need in indoor air quality, these semiconductors can go to almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit within one second. So that, that is going to be key if you're going to start to look and evaluate LEDs and how you're going to apply and we'll go into that in a minute. Um, it's kind of a traditional um, germicidal curve. You'll see this is the uh, germicidal effect in this curve for E. coli. Um, this is uh, the pink box is your, your traditional standard germicidal range from 250 to 280. And then the, I just want to go through the, the, the gray peak, that's, that's your UVC lamp. That's the actual spectrum I took off. And then the blue peak is actually where your, your ideal UVCs are landing. They run about 270, 277. Now if you look up here, I don't think I have it. Can you see that? Does that show up up there? It does not. But if you look up here, when you look at, this is where you want to play. If, you, if you're going to be prescribing these things, you're looking for an 80, better than 80% effectiveness in, in kill rates. Um, this is all pretty commonly accepted. It's, it's some of the things you need to know. And it all goes back to dose. What is dose? Dose is intensity times time. So if you go back to those LED intensities and you think about the amount of time, one versus the other, how quick do you have in an air handler? How quick do you have in an air duct or in the air environment to actually affect change? It's very important when you look at those. Um, now one of the things you didn't see on that graph was 405 on the end. Are 405 nanometer <coughs> microbial? Yes, if they are applied correctly. And it's really important that you pay attention to the units when you read the studies. Uh, this, the study we're researching right here was put out by Harvard Medical School. It's great. It's 
56 pages. It is a shirt here for insomnia, but it is a 30-year, a compilation of 30 years of studies on blue light UV, uh, 405 nanometer. Uh, and what you see is if you really want a broadband kill or effectiveness, you need 100 to 2,000 plus watts, watts of energy. Uh, whereas traditional UVC lamps, you're talking milliwatts, one one thousandth of a watt. All right, now that's per square centimeter, which is roughly four tenths of an inch square, less than half an inch square. So if you're looking at over 2,000 watts on a half inch square, that's a lot of energy. You know, how are you going to get that in? And so when, when I got asked to do this and I put in 405 nanometer, first thing that came up was Amazon, and that's where this, this part on the bottom came in. Which I thought was pretty interesting because they said, well, one of the things is how do you tell the differences? Well, first off, if you pull up your black lights and you can use them for black lights, and those that are old enough to remember black light posters, they pretty cool in the 70s. And I like fishing, you know, fishing with the same strip. Sterilization implicitly means party. So if it's going to sterilize you implicitly, I don't think I want to party with it. Um, $20, you get 300 lights, 16 and a half feet. Uh, so what is that? What does the math tell you? That's eight hundredths of a watt per lamp per, per LED. So if I need, to, if I have to hit in that that spot of a hundred to two thousand, I'm somewhere between a thousand and twenty-nine thousand LEDs to affect change. Um, that's a lot of LEDs in the space. And so how do you know? How do you know what you're buying? Is it low intensity? Is it high intensity? What are you buying? Look at the heat management. Remember that almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit in one second? If it's mounted on thin aluminum tape, you have no heat management. That tells you that is a low intensity LED. Probably not going to do a lot of work for you, right? So can they work? How do they work? And of course, we're going to plug our own product because I know this. Uh, LEDs, can they work? Yes, they can if you pick the right tool for the job. Very important to understand what you're working, how you're working with. This is a whole home air treatment product, two years in development, just released a couple months ago. Um, uses L UVC LEDs. Um, we, it's, why does it work? Because very, very good use of area and energy management. What does that mean? Well, the distances between the LEDs, which are mounted in the back here, uh, to a catalyst is very small. We're not losing energy. Anytime you use, you, you use light, light energy decreases at an inverse square. So if I went, to, that's one over x squared. And for everybody who just gave me the light flip, so if I'm, at, if I'm at zero and I go to two, that means I, I lost, I'm only at a quarter of my original energy. If I go to a distance of four, I'm at 16. So my energy drops straight down. So, so to be out 16, 18 inches, I need a lot of energy at the surface. I don't have that with an LED, so how do I use it? I reduce the, the distance. Uh, very simple. Uh, the system does not work necessarily on the UVC energy. It's a photocatalytic uh, process uh, that, that creates the result for an active air treatment system. Uh, if you want to go into the details, come by our booth and we can show it to you and I'll walk you through how the whole thing works. Um, so what do you see? It really is understanding the energy, the design, and the properties of an LED. Um, there's some things we saw where people were going to put LED strips on uh, reflectors and throw them on coils and big air handlers. Um, that's not going to work. You don't have enough energy to reach more than a few in, more than probably two inches. Um, so understand a little bit of the science. Understand why the energy applies, where it applies, why it doesn't apply. Now, LEDs. In conclusion, really, evolution's going to keep going. I mean, LEDs are here. They are the future, I think, of, of the indoor air quality and UVC light. They're rapidly evolving with <coughs> wavelengths, higher intensities, and better heat management. Uh, and heat management's key, like we talked about. That's how you're going to tell the difference. Let's look at the heat. Uh, semiconductor design on an LED. The manufacturers I've been talking to tell me that the, of the electricity coming out on UVC, only 10% is converted to light night. The other 90% is heat. Light goes out the front, heat comes out the back. Uh, so that, the, that's the biggest. Uh, the cost of the LEDs, I, I believe, are going to drop. As the van goes, manufacturing comes along, just like what we saw with residential, it's going to drop. 
Um, and commercial use. Commercial use, which is kind of my focus of the LEDs, is going to parallel development. Um, obviously, I can't put a strip of LEDs in an air conditioning system or in a duct that costs, you know, wholesale three thousand dollars. It's, it's not realistic. But as those come down, as technology develops, we will be incorporating and we will use it in our industry. So that's kind of a very quick twenty thousand foot level summary of LEDs today.